Flip thinking is the Dutch art of turning problems into opportunities. The essence of flip thinking is that you accept that problems are often unchangeable. Life just is what it is, and once you accept the facts, you can look at how to create opportunities out of them. Berthold Gunster is the founder of this philosophy and wrote a book about it, Flip Thinking, The Life-Changing Art of Turning Problems into Opportunities. Good morning. Thanks for being with us. Good morning. Good to be here. So tell us how this is different from just having a positive attitude. Well, a positive attitude uh, implies that everything can be joyful, funny, or whatever. And unfortunately, uh, sorrows, problem, pain, all belong to life. And as long as you resist those unchangeable things, you only make life worse. So accepting the unchangeable and then finding out what you can make out of it uh, is a better way instead of resisting and trying to be positive or optimistic, uh, although you know better that you can't be. Mm. One of the guidelines is an acronym ISP. What is that? Stand right. For? It's, it means it sucks, period. It's an acronym, <laughs> right? In life, often it sucks, period, you know? And so when you have a problem that you can't change or can't uh, alter, whatever, then we tend to make a problem out of the fact that we have a problem. So the best way to escape this to, or to get rid of it is just to accept the problem, live with the problem, um, although this is difficult or very often, and then period. Don't make a problem out of the fact that you have a problem. Yeah, so one of the general themes is uh, not to focus on what should be, which I think a lot of people get stuck on, but what could be. And one right. of your tips is importing, which I thought was maybe interesting. What, what is that exactly? Well, importing means that a supposed enemy can be an ally. Uh, so um, uh, if you try to collaborate with the one you thought that would be your opponent, and if you succeed in doing so, for example, uh, like a merge of two companies, uh, then there isn't a battle anymore, but then there's a, a kind of collaboration which could benefit both parties. And you have these 15 tips that are 15 strategies. So importing was one of them. What's the other big right. one? Obviously, you want to accept reality and do all that. But what's the one big difference this flip thinking is in these 15 strategies? Give people an idea. Well, the best thing is to start always with accepting things you can change. And to give you a very simple example, imagine as a man, you are losing your hair, right? For a lot of men, this is a big problem. So you could fix your problem, just fix your problem by wearing a wig or getting a hair transplant or whatever. And there's nothing wrong with that. Then you have solved the problem, right? You, Everything is, again, as it should be. But when, once you go with the flow, expect the fact, accept the fact you, that you are losing your hair, then maybe you can examine what would it be if uh, bold would be the fashion, right? Yeah. Now, how attractive would be somebody like Michael Jordan be when he still <laughs> would have had hair, right? <laughs> yeah, I guess you know, it's what you get used to. Do you find that, this yes. is, do you find that uh, Americans struggle with this whole concept maybe, maybe more so than other people? Well, I'm, I'm very hesitant in uh, judging about cultures of countries, but I do know that if you tend to have a, a sternly optimistic view on life, although you know that you have to accept things now and then, uh, this only will make your life worse. And this is what I call stuck thinking, where, which is um, making catastrophes out of problems. So accepting the unchangeable, um, which seems like, which sounds like defeat, but at the moment you accept that some things can be changed and you might open up for complete new realities. So do the Dutch do this as a matter of course, this flip thinking? Is that uh, something that's kind of ingrained? Yeah, I think so, because, you, you know, we had to fight the water. So for uh, for centuries, for water, for the water was for us an enemy, but the water forced us to collaborate together, to build bikes and to see opportunities out of the fact that water could be a problem. So there's this nice example of a wind, you know, when you want to organize a bicycle tour and it's windy, then wind is a real hassle, right? Um, so what they did in the north of uh, uh, Holland, there's a province called Groningen. It's very flat, open landscape, uh, no trees, uh, windy as hell. So they invented ride the wind, ride with the wind bicycle tours. So the whole idea is that for every possible direction, a tour has been pre-prepared. And due to, that tour is chosen that fits the wind of that day. So all participants subsequently are, you know, like a sailboat going to the finish line. And their buses are waiting to take your bike and you back to the starting line. Ah, so oh. this is for me. Yeah, that's great, right? <laughs> this is what we do in Holland. So see wind not as an opponent, but as an enemy, as an ally.
Oh, it's ah. very cool. Uh, you can check out flipthinking.com or Bertold's podcast, Flip Thinking. Thanks so much for Thank being you. with us. Yeah, great to have been here. Thank you. Thank you. you.